Good morning and welcome back to my bathroom. Today, I'm going to be taking you through a morning melasma skincare routine. Melasma and hyperpigmentation in general is just so stubborn and very hard to treat. And so understanding what kind of ingredients to be looking for, what products to choose, and how to layer and incorporate those products into a routine, I think is really important. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. If you are new here, I'm Dr. Sam Ellis and I'm a board certified dermatologist. I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products that work for you. So if that sounds good, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Before we get into the routine, I do want to note that this video contains a partnership with ISDIN. This is a European skincare brand that I have been using for years, so I am very excited to include them in this video. I also want to take a brief second to chat a little bit about what melasma is. And melasma shows up as these symmetrically distributed brown, sometimes bluish gray patches, most often on the face. It can involve like the forehead, the cheeks, the chin, the nose, the upper lip, the melasma mustache, everyone loves that. <laughs> Mine predominantly involves my upper cheeks and it showed up during my pregnancy. And the thing with melasma is you're genetically predisposed to have it, but then hormonal shifts like pregnancy or starting a birth control pill or excess UV the exposure, those can trigger your melasma to show up on your skin. And the thing that's really important to note about melasma is that it is a chronic skin condition, meaning that it is long lasting and your skin always wants to continue to make these melasma patches. So once you get on a good routine or you've got your melasma under control, it's really important to continue with whatever you're doing or some variation of that to ensure that your melasma doesn't come back because it, it always wants to come back. All right, I have said my piece. Let's get my hair clipped up and back and get this melasma routine on the road. I'm going to start off this morning routine with a cleanse. Now you do not have to cleanse your face in the morning. You could just splash some water on your face and be ready to go. But I've really been enjoying a morning face wash. Now it's really important that if you are going to wash your face twice a day that you're using some type of gentle cleanser at least for one of those cleanses because you really don't want to overly strip or dry out your skin. So today I'm gonna to be using the Aveeno Calm and Restore the Nourishing Oat Cleanser. This is one of my favorites. I posted on my Instagram about this a few weeks ago and so many of you were like, oh, that's my favorite too. So I'm glad it also has your approval. So I just off camera splashed a little water on my face to get ready. I'm gonna take a little of that cleanser so that's what it looks like. And you just need about one pump. The thing about this cleanser is it's not gonna foam up or suds up on you. And so sometimes people think if their skin cleanser is not foaming up that it's not doing a good job of washing your face, which is just simply not the case. So we just sort of massage that in make it kind of ritualistic. I like to massage my masseter muscles because I kind of clench my jaw at night. So that's just a nice way to sort of treat myself in the morning. And I'll just rinse this off. So we're all cleansed. Let's get into the other products. When I'm choosing products or types of ingredients to include in a melasma skincare routine, I'm really picking products that have ingredients that fight the melanogenesis pathway. And that's the pathway in our skin cells that produces melanin. And melanin is what gives our skin color, but is also what gives us irregular pigmentation. So anytime you're incorporating ingredients that disrupt that pathway, reduce that excess production of melanin, you're going to help any type of hyperpigmentation. So first thing I'm going to start off with is a topical antioxidant, specifically vitamin C and even more specifically, a vitamin C product that has L-ascorbic acid. Because although there are many different types of vitamin C or its derivatives, L-ascorbic acid is the one that has the most data in terms of fighting hyperpigmentation and reducing melanin synthesis in the skin. This morning, I am going in with the Maylove Glow Maker. This has 15% L-ascorbic acid. And every time I talk about vitamin C on my channel, so many of you are like, hey, can I get an affordable vitamin C option? This one's great. It's like 30 bucks, so give it a shot. Now, this type of bottle makes me a little nervous. I don't want to tip it over, so I gotta be careful here. This is what it looks like. It's usually a pale yellow, sometimes even clear. If it starts getting dark yellow or becomes kind of syrupy in texture, it's spoiled, don't use it anymore. But this shade of yellow is completely fine. The vitamin C is still good in it. I use about two, three, four, five-ish drops for my face and neck. I'm just gonna put that between my fingertips and just sort of press it into my skin. I like this product because it also has hyaluronic acid, so it's gonna help just kind of plump up the skin a little bit as well. So we're gonna let that sit for like 30 seconds and then move on to our next step. I like to put my vitamin C serum on first because it's the most watery and you generally want to layer your products from the thinnest and most water-based towards the thickest and most oil-based. If you put your oil-based products on first, it's going to create a little bit of a barrier and it's going to prevent to some degree the penetration of your other products, which is why I'm doing it in this order. 
So next up is the Naturium Tranexamic Topical Acid 5%. This is also quite a lightweight serum. And not only does it have tranexamic acid, which helps fight hyperpigmentation, but it has other pigmentation fighters in it as well, like kojic acid and licorice root extract and niacinamide. So it's a great serum for people who are looking for something that's easy to layer in their routine and has multiple pigment fighters. As a note, full disclosure, I am on the Naturium Advisory Board. So I'm gonna take about maybe like a third of a dropper here. You can see it's a little bit thicker than that vitamin C, actually significantly thicker. And we're just gonna layer that on top. Now I use oral tranexamic acid to treat melasma in my clinic for my patients, uh, but a lot of people can't take oral tranexamic acid for various reasons. So your next bet is to incorporate it into a topical like this. Next, I'm gonna go in with my azelaic acid gel 15%. Now this sort of serves two purposes in my routine. It helps with rosacea, which is something I struggle with, but it also helps with hyperpigmentation. And the thing that I love about azelaic acid is that it is safe if you are trying to conceive or you are pregnant. Whereas other pigment fighters like tretinoin and other retinoids, as well as hydroquinone, which are great pigment fighters, they're not okay when you are trying to conceive or when you're pregnant. So azelaic acid is an awesome ingredient because you don't have to worry about incorporating it and then taking it out of your routine. You can just use it no matter what. So I'm gonna use about a pea-sized amount. This is sort of like a very thin, I call it a gel, but it feels kind of like a lotion, maybe like a lotion gel. Uh, and I'm gonna focus it on my cheeks, which is my biggest area of pigmentation and also where I have my rosacea. And then I'll just sort of spread it everywhere. The key when you're layering so many different products is to do a thin layer. You don't wanna go in heavy or thick with your products because then it's going to pill up or ball up on the skin. And then that's going to discourage you from using a wide variety of products. And I'm not saying that every routine needs multiple steps, but when you're fighting hyperpigmentation, the more effective ingredients that you have in your routine, the better. And so it's just something to keep in mind for this particular type of regimen. Now, if you don't have access to prescription azelaic acid, there are over-the-counter versions of azelaic acid or azelaic acid compounds. One of my favorites is a product called Meliderm. And I don't feel like people talk about Meliderm enough, but it is an amazing skin brightener. It's really meant to be used in a routine in place of hydroquinone. So for people who can't use hydroquinone or don't want to use hydroquinone, this product has azelaic acid in it, but it has other skin brighteners as well, like kojic acid and licorice root extract and alpha arbutin and some other proprietary skin brighteners. It's great for melasma. It's great for hyperpigmentation on and off the face because I have patients who use it on their face, but I also have patients who use it on their body, like on their hyperpigmented elbows and knees or in their hyperpigmented skin folds, and they find a lot of success with it. Okay, we are nearing the end of our routine and we sort of have a choice here. Do we do moisturizer and sunscreen or just sunscreen? And I think both are good options. You just have to sort of think about what your skin is sort of craving or needing that day. If it feels a little bit dry, put a moisturizer on before your sunscreen. But if you find that you get kind of oily throughout the day or your skin feels heavy with the products that you're using, skip the moisturizer. That's just fine too. I am going to put on a moisturizer today and I'm going in with the Replenix Age Restore Brightening Moisturizer. This is a divine moisturizer for people who want something that's sort of that mid weight, like not too light, not a gel cream, but not super thick and heavy. It's just gorgeous. You can kind of see texture there leaves like a really nice, just hydrated finish on the skin. So we'll do that next. Mm, I'm excited. <laughs> Oh, it feels good. So this also has niacinamide in it, which is a brightening antioxidant. It also has a green tea polyphenol complex, another antioxidant situation that's going to help just fight off UV damage as well as other free radicals caused by environmental exposures or just your regular cellular metabolism. I'll just rub that in, get it nice and even. I'm not using an eye cream today, so I'm just gonna push that moisturizer up around the eyes as well and let it work as my eye cream today too. And now we are ready for our grand finale of my melasma skincare routine. And I will give you one guess as to what product we're going in with next. Yes, it is a sunscreen. Obviously, melasma is so intensely driven by UV radiation. So the more we can do to block UV radiation's harmful effects on the skin, the better our skin is going to look, the better our anti-pigmentation regimen is going to stick with us, and it has anti-aging properties and skin cancer blocking properties as well. So why wouldn't you finish every morning skincare routine with sunscreen. And the sunscreen I'm going in with today is the Isden Erifotona Actinica Ultralight Emulsion. This is a broad spectrum 
Spectrum SPF 50 sunscreen. This version is non-tinted and the UV filter in here is zinc oxide. So if you're looking for a mineral only or physical only sunscreen, this is great. So let's get started. It's a very, you hear that? It's a very liquidy sunscreen. So you shake it up. And when I use a liquidy sunscreen, I really like to put it on sort of in layers. So we'll go in with layer one to start. In addition to being you know, a mineral sunscreen. It also has something called DNA repair zones in it. So it's going to help repair existing UV damage in your skin, which is great. You're not only protecting from the sun's existing rays, but also fighting the damage that your skin has already incurred. Like most mineral sunscreens, it's going to have a little white cast in the beginning, but once it sets up, that essentially disappears on my skin. All right, I'm gonna go in with layer number two. This is also water resistant for 40 minutes. So this is one I often pick up if I'm gonna be outside hiking or now I'm playing pickleball, like the cool mom that I am. So if I'm gonna be like on a pickleball court or just that I'm worried about sweating when I go in the water, this is one that I often reach for. So it's really great for summer. And you can see, I also applied it to my neck. You really wanna make sure you're applying to all exposed areas, so the tops of the ears, and then usually I have a little leftover and I'll use it on the back of my hands. So we'll let that set up for a little bit before we finish off our routine. While this is drying down, I'll just take a second to talk about the Rifatona Ageless. This is the tinted version and also has some antioxidants and some anti-aging peptides in it as well. It's a little too tinted for my skin if I don't have a fake tan on. Super lightweight. You can kind of get a sense of the color there. It's a little warm on me. The other benefit of using a tinted sunscreen if you have hyperpigmentation or melasma is the iron oxides in the tinted sunscreen help block blue light from the sun. And we know that blue light also contributes to pigmentation, not just UV radiation. So if you have a tint in your sunscreen, that's like bonus points. Another thing I absolutely love about the ISDN sunscreen, and if other companies are watching this, please take note, is that you get 3.4 ounces in a bottle. That is basically double what most sunscreens give you. And the reason that's so important is because if you have a tiny package of sunscreen, you might think about trying to save that sunscreen or use it sparingly, but sunscreen really needs to be used in the correct amount for it to be truly effective. And I just think having a larger package really encourages you to use this sunscreen properly. All right, that is my morning melasma skincare routine. Hopefully you learned something new. Of course, if you have any questions about the routine, put it in the comments below. Also, if you have any products that have been particularly helpful for your or melasma or hyperpigmentation, put it in the comments. I want to know what you're using. It helps other viewers on this channel learn about new products that may benefit them. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time.